morning everybody welcome back to Starkey Farmstead sorry about the uh, funky clothes <clears throat> I've got a lot to do this morning it's extremely early my husband was woke up at 3 30 this morning to Atlas our small farm dog going insane on the porch I mean just flat going insane now he's a fighter one-on-one -on -one, he'll fight so my husband knew he knew if, if Atlas wasn't already taking care of the problem, we had a big problem. So he grabbed his 410 and a flashlight, made it around this pond towards the rabbitry where he could hear the noise and realized we had four medium-sized dogs attempting to stand where we keep our compost pile and leap into or onto the cages where the rabbits hang. Like we hang our cages. I'll take you over there in a second and show you the infrastructure. I need to stay out of there for a little while though. The rabbits are traumatized. We, it's just, all I can say is thank you God for protecting what you gave me at all times. What should have been a complete and utter massacre ended up with only three dead rabbits. And so, three dead rabbits, three dead dogs, and an injured dog somewhere. I mean, we shoot to kill, but what, 3.30 in the morning, it's a little hard to uh, aim and shoot and aim and shoot. And when he let go with that shotgun, they, the big ones, the big ones didn't stay very long, but the small ones did, they tried to hide. So he had to go back inside and get his pistol and we had to take care of business. Um, Guys, we love animals. All right, you've seen so many videos of my German Shepherd and my Dotson, our chickens, our quail, our rabbits, even our red wigglers. Like we truly love animals or we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So this is one of our other videos, an untrained dog, any untrained dog is a predator to your livestock, any livestock. So having said that, and that's exactly how I feel, that's how I believe, that's why my dogs are flipping trained people so why train my flipping dogs? Um, nobody wants to wake up in the morning and start shooting dogs. Like, nobody does. Nobody wants to wake up and realize you just lost $45 in meat. I have two pregnant does. Do now. Neither one of them kindled. Um, this is actually day 32, so they were due last night. Thank you, God. They weren't in the process of delivery when that nonsense popped off. Um, I'm gonna use this video for several things. Ooh wee, I'm crazy here this morning, don't I? All right, so let's talk about this. Infrastructure, I tell you guys all the time, you really can't predator-proof anything. A hungry animal sees your livestock as a buffet. It's an easy kill, a very easy kill. Like I said, my cages are hung, they're hung pretty high. So it made these dogs have to stand on their back legs to attempt to get to the rabbits. So something I learned today, and maybe if I'd have really thought through the process, but we rarely think about something that hasn't happened to us. Just how humans are, we're like, that doesn't make sense because we've never really thought the process through. Let me tell you how they attack. If your cages are high, they come in from underneath. Well, their teeth fit through even the small grade you know, little holes in the cages, right? Their teeth fit through that. Well, what is actually on that cage? Think about it, your rabbit's feet. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but it is appalling what they do to their feet. I, no, honestly don't think there's much I could have done for the three we put down. They weren't dead, but we don't allow animals to suffer. I'm not letting some poor animal suffer, but I probably have 20 rabbits with wounded feet that I can treat this morning. That's why I'm in this whole tore up long sleeve shirt, trying to tent my, you know, protect my arms from what's fixing to happen. Cause they're going to tear me up. My husband is running late for work. He had to load up all kinds of dead stuff this morning and then clean the truck. You know I mean? You can only do so much. The man, has to work. So now I'm, I'm at home alone with wounded animals, which I don't mind. Okay, wait, don't, okay. That sounded like I was complaining. Poor me, I'm at home alone. I'm not, I chose this life, okay? 
these are my animals to steward. I will do the utmost in my ability, and that's a lot, to care for these animals. I just want you to realize, stop dropping your animals off in a city or the country and be like, they'll be okay, somebody up on them and take care of them. Well, we took care of them for you. Three of them, and one of them's wounded, and I hate that, hate that. Like, that hurts my heart more than the fact that we just killed, the three we killed, is the one that's wounded out there. It's not like anything to suffer. That's ridiculous. But like I said, you, one person with a flashlight and a 410, I mean, you're only gonna be able to do what you can. But now there's still three dogs running around that now know what livestock tastes like and then that's an easy kill for them. So when you drop animals off in the country, let me tell you what happens to your animal. It packs up, if it survives that long. If it gets out of puppiness, grows at all, it's weak, it's wormy, it's full of ticks because, I mean, I pick ticks out of that German Shepherd's ear all the time and I, I'm in his ears like every day now. I'm like, what's going on with this ear? So he's got a human that cares for him, right? Digging in his ear, checking his chest plate around the back of his neck. And I'm taking ticks off mine constantly. So I can only imagine what, what these dogs have on them, all right? They're living in these woods with much bigger predators humans being the number one thing. This is like hunting country. Somebody's gonna be sitting in their hunting stand and here comes the starving dog. And what do you think they're gonna do to it? They're gonna kill it. If it doesn't get hit on the, the roads by the 18 wheelers, what do you think is gonna happen when it goes into somebody's yard and their dogs attack it? Because all of us have dogs. Steven, the first thing he did actually was release the German Shepherd out of the pen because he sleeps with the chickens. Thank God, thank God, the chickens, the quail, the rabbits in the, in the shop, all of them are okay. I mean, Atlas is one dog, seven dogs out here attacking my rabbit tree this morning. So here we have some of the survivors of the dog attack. These are the ones I'm gonna be treating today. So what happens guys is they go underneath these cages and they go after these baby's feet. I've got some damage there. Hi baby. So I had to put down this one's litter mate. It's all right, baby. It's all right, sweetheart. Uh, she got hit. Her feet. Like I said earlier, thank God they had their boxes to get on. These are both due. I don't know, they're not kindling. My bucks seem to be okay. My husband said that our main buck right here may have some damage to his feet, but I don't, I don't see any blood. This little guy is okay. So we lost a total of three. We lost one out of this group, one out of this group. These guys took it hard down here, y'all. Look, look at their fur. I mean, look, look at that baby trying to hop. Uh, I'm gonna try to save these two. I know you're probably thinking it doesn't look bad. Surely you can save them. Let me explain to you how rabbits work. If these turn into big massive sores, they're just gonna suffer. So I also lost one in this group. I actually had just done some video on these two beautiful California mixes right here. And was telling you, I was hoping one of them was a female, but look at all that blood. So that's how they kill you rabbits when they come in. I do have hanging cages. Yep, lots of fur in here. This is where our mothers deliver. You know anything about rabbits, you know that the mom's gonna pull all of her additional extra fur out to cover her naked babies. So, rabbit trees tend to say with a lot of fur. I mean, I have a shot back in there and about once a month I try to suck as much up of as I can, but I've learned that it doesn't, it doesn't affect them. Let me show you how I am going to treat all of these feet wounds. A warm Epsom salt soak. So this water is warm, it is not hot, it is not cold. The Epsom salt has now dissolved in it. Uh, Epsom salt is really good for soreness. Uh, probably need to go get a little table salt and put that in there too, that's really good for infection. I've got gloves, I've got a dry towel to pat them dry afterwards. I'm gonna put this rag into the pot and I've got iodine, all right? 
2% mild. After I pat them dry, I will use the iodine right here to put on top of all the wounds. What is it, Atlas? You did good waking us up. You just a little fella. I know you could take the possum, but mom's proud of you for not attempting to take seven dogs. And like we said, the German Shepherd, Hammer, he stays uh, in the chicken coop at nights, so would not lose any chickens, but it's just, it's just bad. I can't show you all the blood, I don't want to, but it's all underneath the cages where I catch the manure. On the back sides of those totes, they had all been knocked over, the dogs were attempting to stand on them. So I probably need to rethink that too. <laughs> Cause like I told you, my cages hang, which was a huge plus because that means the cages rock when something attempts to get on them. So the cages were rocking, which probably really helped the rabbits be able to move as much as they did and keep the dogs off balance until they figured out that they could knock these over and stand on them, okay? So lesson learned. Yeah, it's great. It does keep your floor a little less covered in poop and all that great stuff. But you notice the German Shepherd is doing a lot of sniffing. He can smell the blood. He can smell the dogs. But notice what he's not doing, guys. He's not bothering the rabbits above him, above him at all. Like he's, we have a video out where he saved a, a baby rabbit that had come out of one of these cages and carried it to my parents for me. Like he knows these are his to protect. I could put them on the ground. He, he would just watch them. So uh, if you do what I do and you catch manure underneath your kennels, I advise that you move it out. Let the poop go to the ground, just shovel. It's gonna add a little extra work to me, but I'm okay with that because now I realize that the dogs are gonna use whatever they can to balance to get to your rabbits. Oop, I left that cage open and mama's trying to come out. It's all right, sweetheart. It's all right, I'm coming to treat your feet right now. All right, guys, I need to go. I've got a lot of treating to do. I probably won't be able to get any filming of it because I'll be doing it by myself. Like I said, my husband had to go to work. Say a little prayer for my rabbits. I know, they're okay, Hammer. I know, you smell the dogs. All right, guys. Way worse than I thought. I've got um, two, possibly three, we're gonna put down today. The bleeding has stopped this morning. It was really dark. We couldn't see, we could just see the ones that were really bleeding. Now that the light is up, I'm cleaning wounds. I realize that I've got three baby rabbits with the majority of the digits, the bone fully exposed back to the pad of the paw. So basically what the dogs did was either rip the toe completely off, bone and all, or the skin repeatedly. Um, I've treated it, like I said, with the warm Epsom salt, put some iodine on the, the worst ones. I didn't put iodine on the ones that just had nicks because that's how I'm thinking. Gotta be really careful with iodine. It can be toxic. So they are licking, rubbing their little feet. What I've decided to do is I'm gonna go get a bunch of hay and I'm gonna thickly hay out the bottom of the cages so that their feet are up off the metal and they can comfortably rest. Now I feed them hay every day and I always put enough that they can play in it, but this, this is not to eat. This is so that they can bed. Like a wild rabbit, they can create a nest for themselves, curl up on it, and begin their healing process. I will keep an eye on them throughout the day. If they become in too much distress or too much pain, I myself will dispatch them, even though I've never done it. Y'all saw me kill my first rooster the other day. But this is why you have to learn how to put your livestock down humanely. That's why we made the other video. I'm just a little heartbroken. Like I said, I give all the glory to God that I've got any rabbits left at all. The ones in the shop, the ones in the front, and the racking pen where the dog, my dog, my German Shepherd can get up underneath. Those are all perfect, perfect. All the chickens, all the quail, perfect. These guys are out here by themselves. They're a little bit more exposed. And in doing so, inevitably, I've left them to where predators can more easily get to them. Uh, it was a quick response from the small form dog. He alerted us. He got back to the porch, really just started snarling and barking. It's a different than just a rough, rough. It's a, there's something on the property, you know. My husband woke up, he heard it. He knew immediately, get the flashlight, get the 410. Let's go take care of business. And we did. We have one injured dog running somewhere, three that got away and three deceased. But that does not help the fact that these rabbits have really bad feet. 
Let me go see if I can get some better pictures and show you guys what we're talking about. Do you see that bone exposed right there? And look, look at the other one, trying to help. Licking the wound, nibbling it, trying to clean it. He's basically missing the nubs on that, that foot. Okay, we've got that. This little guy down here. Look, you can still see the blood here. Oh yeah, that's meat, great. I mean, they just shredded these babies' feet. I mean, just, these weren't bad. Like I said, these are the ones that survived it. These are all the ones that have been cleaned. But this, this beauty right here, this beauty right here is probably not gonna make it. And he is beautiful, beautiful. The bottoms, I don't know, he's not gonna let me get close. There's basically no toes left on one foot and bone exposed sticking out in several places on the other feet you see how they're getting they're not wanting to put any weight on their front paws it's heartbreaking look at that just trying to help a brother out literally you can see the bone where she's licking that's bone she's moving that fur back exposing that bone trying to clean it that's why i said i have to be very careful with the iodine because they're trying to clean each other's wounds. What my husband found when he came out here at 3.30 this morning, or once the dogs realized that they couldn't really pull the meat through the bottom of the cages, hammer, come. What they did was they came out here and stood right here and attempted to get to the bucks. That's my pregnant does over here. So I'm getting in their boxes. So what we had were a somewhat okay structure. The dogs were attempting to go from the bags to the fence and balance to get into the, to be able to pull the sides of the cages off. Uh, the other side, they didn't even attempt because if you can see, there's metal back there, but it's too hot. Normally, this side is covered also with a metal like the back side is right here. We had to take that down. Temperatures were hitting 100 degrees inside this rabbit tree and they were overheating. Now, we have been leaving the, the door open because we had that big fan. So the door area is here. We actually have a door. So what my husband's gonna do tonight is unroll some chicken wire that we have all the way across from the pallet to the top of the roof right here. So from here to here, we'll be covered in chicken wire. The door will have to be shut. Is that gonna predator proof? No, not at all. Like I tell you, I mean, you can do what you want. You can slow them down. Slow them down till you get outside with your gun. That leaves that big corner open right there, but they'd have to get up on the pallet and jump. A lot of these animals are sick, hungry, starving. <laughs> they, they, uh aren't gonna really have too, too much energy. So if you can slow them down until you can get out here, you can defend your flock. You can release your dogs. Like I said, we had the small dog was out. Atlas, you a good boy? He was out, the guy's seven dogs, look at his size. He was in the coop with the chickens. My husband released him, came out with the guns and you've heard the rest of the story. Just a reminder, dropping your animals off in the country or the city or in a nice neighborhood just means a slow, painful death for your animal. Very few animals are ever, ever rescued or adopted that way. I know there's a lot of bleeding hearts out there. I worked at animal shelter, a no-kill animal shelter for a long time, and I'm all for it, okay? But you have the rest of the population who doesn't understand getting their animals fixed, all right, or properly disposing of their animals if they're not gonna keep them. A lot of people are gonna have a problem with what I just said. Yes, I just said properly dispose of your animals if you're not gonna take care of them. Kill them humanely, including dogs and cats. Quit dropping them off, making them somebody else's problem. Because like I said, whoever dropped these three puppies off, guess what? You didn't give them a better life. The, the white one 
was so aggressive. People in the neighborhood were just telling me this morning when I made my phone calls, hey guys, don't worry. These dogs are gone, but we still have a pack of dogs running. They're like, you know, that little white one was super aggressive. Yeah, he was not much bigger than my Dotson. Given another four months, he would have been a real threat to people and children and just regular house pets, a real threat. So people complain about guns, gun control. I'm not afraid of guns. I'm not afraid of somebody with a gun. I am a little taken back when I have an animal that's gone feral, a domesticated animal that's gone feral, that's in my yard growling at me or my animals are going after my livestock because they're starving. Now, those four bigger dogs might be somebody's dog. Probably is out here, all right? They probably have a home, but they were starving. My husband said they were very skinny. So what that tells me as the economy takes, you're gonna see more and more animals fending for themselves for food. Because when it comes down to it, most Americans, most humans would say, I'm gonna feed my family before I feed my dogs. So in their mind, they're just gonna release the dogs go drop them off in the woods and be like, oh, they're gonna make it, they're gonna find food. No, they're not, we're gonna kill them because they're gonna come after my livestock. This is my livelihood. I'm gonna feed my family but and my animals before I worry about a stray animal, period, period. I never take dogs. People ask me all the time, would you please take my dog? No, I won't. You know why? Because I have to rehabilitate it and I have to train it and that takes so much time. I don't have that kind of time right now, all right? I put that time into my animals. That's why you don't have to worry about my animals attacking my animals. Literally, you know, my animals won't attack the livestock. So, quit being naive people with your animals. Get them fixed. If you cannot get them fixed, they get pregnant and they have puppies. Don't come drop them off out here in the country. Don't do it. Be man enough or woman enough. If you don't have an animal shelter near you or you don't have the money to take them to a no-kill shelter or an adoption agency that's gonna charge you 45 or $95 per animal for you to give that animal up. If you don't have the money for that, put a bullet in them. I mean that. And I don't care who likes it or who gets upset, who, who tells me I'm cruel and inhumane, you need to wake up, get out your bubble. What happened to those rabbits was avoidable. Partially on my part, like I said, I learned a few things about my infrastructure, had the door open due to the heat, so that in the evening that cool air is being pulled through that door and add buckets underneath the cages to catch manure. Both those things will change today on Starkey Farmstead because <laughs> I see the problem and I look for a solution. Will that be the, the fix all? No. My husband will also add chicken wire to slow them down. Is, is that gonna stop another attack? Probably not. But if I can slow the animals down long enough to get my animals out here, my husband and myself out here with a gun and a flashlight, I can stop that attack real easy real easy so you can call me cruel inhumane whatever you want my husband made a video about this yesterday a 60 second short protect your family at all costs protect your property protect your family that means against other people and against animals that other people have dropped off bleeding hearts i'm gonna put them off in the in the woods and now somebody's gonna say you could have kept the puppies and you could have found them a home where am i gonna kennel them I don't have a kennel set up for, for three feral puppies that are probably wormy and all kinds of, I don't have, no, 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 I'm not even going to entertain that nonsense. No, they were going after my rabbits. They are no longer a threat to anybody's livestock around me, period. Call me mean. It's called life. So if you're going to homestead, get really prepared. Prepare yourself for the realities of homesteading, waking up to footless baby rabbits. Wait, get, prepare. Um, you know, I hear people talking about they had goats go deliver and because they had good guardian dogs, they go out and there's a goat delivering in the woods and there's all these dead coyotes and injured dogs because they've been fighting while the mother is delivering a baby. Like your animals are on the top of the predator's food chain. They're like oh, free food all in one place. All we have to do is breach through the security. So what does your security on your farmstead look like? I hope it's a gun and a couple of dogs, honest to God, because nothing else is gonna stop it. No amount of electric fences, no amount of double hardware wire, no amount of digging trenches and going six feet in the ground. 
if a predator wants to get into your cages, they're going to find a way to get into your cages. Your best defense on a homestead, hobby form, that's why I say stay small, stay in, because your best defense is you. I've got two acres. I can pretty much make it across this property in seconds. My dogs definitely can. My gun definitely can. If it was much bigger, I'd be very pressed to properly care for everything on this property and to be able to cut. I can't even imagine. Like, I'm not ready for 10 acres and, and you know, 300 animals. That That's like craziness. That would be a two, three, four person job all day, every day. I don't, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm ready to, to continue learning with what God has given me, what's in my hand right now. When I pass all these tests, when, when I prove that I can multiply and prosper and do all of that here at Starkey Formstead, I will begin to purchase more property and increase the size of my homestead. Start small. It's a lot, guys, to be woke up at 3.30 in the morning and have to kill dogs and then have to kill rabbits and then leave your wife at home to tend to rabbits, making notes on a notepad on which one she thinks she's probably going to have to put down. So right now I'm sitting at a little over $45 in meat going and I very well may hit close to 60 or $75 worth of meat going today. I had buyers for these rabbits. You know, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Well, you got the wrong place. Got the wrong place, Satan. Get your hands off what God gave me. Get your hands off. Because everything that my hands touch, multiply and prospers. Period. That's what God says. I don't care what the world says, and I don't care how it looks today. Everything that Samantha touches with her hands will multiply and it will prosper. So when my does deliver today, I'm gonna have twice as many babies as I normally will have. I'm speaking that into existence. So you guys have a great, beautiful, wonderful Tuesday. Thank you for watching. Just wanted to show you the realities of homesteading. Please like, comment, and subscribe your experiences. Well, please like, comment your, your experiences with things similar to this and how you handled it. I mean, you can get in. I like to hear stories. Go ahead, type it all out. I'll read it and subscribe. We're gonna row in each other's boats. You guys have a blessed day.